A very warm welcome, everyone. My name is Nicholas Tan from Penanga Futures, Sri the Heart. Thank you for spending your precious time to join our webinar today. It's a joint collaboration with CME Group in our effort to create awareness and provide education on listed directives to all the participants. We have returned with our nationwide campaign, Into the Futures. Stand a chance to win prizes worth up to 30,000 ringgit when you trade Malaysian, US and Hong Kong futures contract from 1st August 2020 until 31st October 2020. So there are like a few more days to go. Catch up. Please take note that futures and options trading involve substantial risk due to leverage factor and may not be suitable for all investors. This webinar is purely for educational purposes. Kananga Futures, Surinam Bahad accepts no liability whatsoever for any direct or consequential loss arising from any use of the content of this webinar. So before we start, we'd like to take this opportunity to invite you to Kananga Futures next webinar, which is on 10 November. Mark down the date. It's about strategy berdagang dalam pasaran niaga harapan menggunakan technical analysis. It's a webinar in Bahasa Malaysia version. So an invitation will be sent to you shortly. Don't miss out. Please remember to, re uh, to register once you receive the email. Next, if you have any questions for our speaker, please feel free to post your questions through the Q&A box on the right side or at the bottom of your screen. And he will attend to your questions after the presentation. Today we have uh, Mr. David here, and he's going to share with us about applying technical analysis in your commodities trading. So without further delay, I would like to kickstart our webinar today by welcoming our speaker, Mr. David. David, over to you. Hi, uh, Nicholas. Uh, thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, just before I start, I'd just like to do a sound check. Uh, Nicholas, can you hear me loud and clear? Yes, very clear. Okay, that's great. Uh, okay, uh, first, just like to thank uh, everyone for making it tonight. Uh, I thank you for spending your evening. Uh, hopefully, you guys have your dinner. Uh, and obviously, just so just like to thank the Nanga Futures as well as CME for hosting this uh, webinar today, uh, which title using technical analysis, especially in commodities trading. Um, and in some examples, I'm going to use. I will be touching mainly on the three major commodities, which is corn, wheat and soybeans. Okay, so we can just start. Um, as usual, disclaimer, I think just to reiterate what Nicholas has just mentioned earlier, uh, whatever we present here today, uh, information uh, is purely on educational purpose. Um, so there's, there's no any recommendation of buying and selling. Uh, they're purely on your own jurisdiction. Um, and on top of that, I think um, since this topic's on technical analysis, um, I'm just going to give you a very brief background myself. Um, I'm actually doing uh, mainly if you talk about trading strategy, I'm more to swing trading. So some examples that we're going to go through later is purely based on uh, medium to longer term time frame, which I can share with you in details uh, later on. And I, I think if you are currently trading in the market, I think that's good. Um, and if you are doing well in the market, that's even better. Um, if you're someone new to the market, I believe now is actually quite an opportune time. Uh, especially when you look at um, a lot of major commodities, you look at the prices, they're actually been quite volatile these days. Um, and it, when it's market is volatile, it presents opportunity. Um, so therefore, I think if you're someone new to the futures market, do take the opportunity to be on board in this market. And hopefully whatever I shared today will be, will be something of a platform where you can start off with if you are new to even to technical analysis. Um, so hopefully at the end of the session, you probably can go back, um, you know, and use some of the techniques and trading strategy, which I'm going to share with you today, and probably will, will expand some of your methodology actually when it comes to trading commodities. So agenda for today's webinar is, uh, we'll break down into three main components. I think the first part we'll talk about trend analysis. Um, when you look at technical analysis as a whole, uh, two fundamental things and principles very important, which is price and time and volume. Um, so that makes it three. Um, so whenever you study, when you look at the overall market as a whole in terms of technical analysis, you need to look at the trend. So we're going to dive uh, deep down into some of the key areas on how we can identify the trend. How can we identify the overall trend of the market? And from then on, uh, you are able, better able to position your trade, position your entry and exit. And obviously, seeing the market trend is not sufficient enough for you to make a whole analysis. Obviously, you have to couple um, your trend analysis together with other technical indicators. 
um, there's a couple of uh, technical indicators which commonly traders use. And I believe one of major, one of common indicators that a lot of traders outside are using right now is moving averages. Um, so I'm also going to touch a little bit on that. Um, and obviously, if you are someone that's new to candlesticks, um, perhaps maybe you have not heard about Haken Ashi. Um, so I do not worry about that. I'm just going to share a little bit more uh, on the later part of the webinar on what is Haken Ashi candles. Um, and I do incorporate uh, this type of methods into my trading strategy whenever it comes to trading the commodity segments. Um, so with moving averages, with trend analysis, with Haken Ashi, and last but not least, obviously, is to build a comprehensive trading plan. So without a trading plan, technically, you're just planning to fail. So obviously, when you are new to the market, when before you embark onto the market, before you embark on a journey to become a trader, you need to have a proper plan. So I'm going to touch that on the later, the end of this webinar series on how you can actually build your own trading plan. So let's just begin um, by first identifying what is a market trend. So market trend in general is classified into a bullish market and a bearish market. So the famous saying, you know, are we in a bull market or are we in a bear market? So if I were to say, you no, know, look at Dow Jones, for example, what, what is trend like? So obviously you have seen a massive downtrend back in early March this year due to the pandemic. And obviously we have seen a recovery thereafter. And obviously right now you can see that before, just before the US election, uh, we could see some sharp rallies. And obviously just a couple of days ago, we see a sharp decline. So these are all volatility of the market. But it's important for us to identify the overall trend of the market because you know, um, there's always a saying, if trend is your friend, never go against the trend because you know, if you if you are someone a trader, if you always trade against the trend, technically you are trading against the market bias. So you know, technically you are going against the market flow. The probability of you succeeding from this way is not going to be very high. So in always in the right frame of mind, whenever you identify the trend, be with the market trend. So, you know, as uh, if you look at some of the major theories out there talking about trend analysis, um, a lot of them will always refer to Dow theory as one of the key components whenever we analyze uh, trends. Um, you know, in Dow theory, it mentions that trends are always break down to three major components. We have the primary trend, we have the secondary trend, we have the minor trends. And obviously, primary trends are, you're talking about very big long-term trends of the market. Um, it's, it's not your daily or your weekly or even monthly or even yearly charts. It's talking about you know, 20 to 30 years, that kind of cycle. So it's important for us to identify the overall major trend. And from there, we break down into a smaller time frame. So obviously, identifying the big trend will help you to analyze whether it's a currently the market is in a bullish phase or in the bearish phase. So now, in a bull market, it's usually categorized as a market where you always see higher highs. So if prices continue to break higher uh, prices uh, from the previous high, that means the market is actually climbing higher and higher. It's like taking a step of stairs. So each uh, you're climbing up the stairs, you're taking each subsequent uh, higher levels of flight of stairs. So same goes for the market. In a bullish phase, you always see uh, prices going higher and higher. And even those uh, low prices are also making higher lows. So in bull market of this phase, it's usually categorized by higher highs and higher lows. Now, in a bear market, it's the vice versa. So in bear market, normally it's signified and categorized by lower highs and lower lows. So if you see market that's always trying to make, uh, trying to break lower and lower prices, that signifies that the market is actually on a bearish phase. So just to give you, to depict whatever I mentioned in terms of graphical image. So you can clearly see the picture on the left is showing you an uptrend where you can see the higher highs, the peaks of the prices are going higher and higher, even though the trolls are also making higher lows. So that tells you that the market currently is in an uptrend. Now on the right, you can clearly see that the highs are going lower and lower. Each subsequent is like going down the stairs. You're taking each lower subsequent steps of the stairs. So in a downtrend, you can clearly see that the highs are making lower and lower subsequently. And for the lows, coincidentally, it's also going lower and lower. So this usually categorizes that the market is in a bearish phase. Now, just to show you graphically, uh, this is basically a weak futures chart. You can clearly see um, the circles that are highlighted in 
black circles, black line circles, are actually indicating that uh, those are high, high, higher lows. And those circles indicated yellow color, in yellow color are basically points which indicate higher highs. So technically in that phase, we are seeing that the market is on an uptrend. Now, vice versa. If you see market categorized by lower lows, which you can see in the darker circles, and lower highs, which you can see in the yellow circles, technically the market is showing you a bearish trend. Now, trend can can a trend last for a period of time? It does in certain certain circumstances, but a trend always have distortions. A trend cannot continue indefinitely. There will always be a point in time where the trend ultimately face uh, exhaustion. After exhaustion, you tend whether you reverse or continue a trend it depends. Um, so it's very important for us whenever we look at trend analysis, it's for us to identify where is the trend reverse reversal is going to happen. So you can clearly see a classic example. Uh, if you look at diagram A, um, you look at subsequent highs are always higher and the lows are always higher lows. So technically we are in a bullish trend. But take a note at point X. The reason I put a point X there is basically whenever we reach a peak and the next in a bullish phase, the next peak it should be higher than the previous peak. But there is instances where the market uh, tend to be exhaustive the buyers tend, tend to diminish in the market, sellers start to come in, we see peaks to form lower and lower. That is where the start of downtrend is likely to become, especially in a bullish market. Now, if you look at diagram B, it's the same principle. It's an elongation of diagram A. And if you look at it, the point Y is to indicate where the overall bullish trend has actually broken. Um, but generally, if you look at it, uh, if you draw a very clear support line, from the previous low, um, X is the moment prices hit below the X point, technically the, the trend is actually reversed. Now, if you can accompany this study with volume analysis, whenever you face this kind of critical juncture, whenever price try to go down to a critical support level, if it's supported by volume, then it's trying to tell you that the trend is trying to change. And if you are someone that's holding long in the market, you should be getting up. And if you are thinking of shorting the market, you have not entered a position, you should be trying to position your trades at that point in time. Now, if you reverse the scenario, diagram C and diagram D is to point you on a different scenario. It's on a bearish scenario. Because if you look at it, the, the highs, the peaks are getting lower and lower. And the lows are also getting lower and lower. So that means we are in a bearish phase. Now, point X is again to point out that that is pretty much a resistance. And the moment when price break that resistance point, that means it signifies trend reversal. Okay, so I think it's very important if you just not only to just look at trend whether it's bullish and bearish, it's also important, equally important, or in fact more important for us to identify where times or periods or points where trend actually start to reverse. And it's that those times where as a trader you'll be probably taking a position or probably exiting your position. Now I by graphically uh, illustrating the point of a bullish phase um, pointing to higher high and higher low, uh, despite looking at the peaks and throw, we can also look at uh, trends by using moving average. Now, a common denominator in the market is to use the 200 EMA line as a way for you to identify the long-term trend. Um, definitely, I think it's very useful. Um, it's very easy to use. Basically, the reason we use 200, 200 days EMA is basically to signify that 200 days is equal to probably about a year worth of uh, trading calendars and that signify a yearly trend. So 200 EMA can classify as a medium to longer term trend. So for example, if the candles are below the line, it signifies that the market is actually trying to turn downwards. And if the candles are formed above the line, that means the market is trying to go into a bullish phase. So even in fact, uh, trying to see that whether the candles are below or above the line. The E200 EMA line is also very significant in the sense that it also provides you the support and resistance level for each of the subsequent markets. I'm going to show you later on, on some of the slides where you can actually clearly see that the 200 EMA is also can act as a support and resistance level for a particular price. And clearly, if you are in, in a side range market, generally the line is always black. 
and when, whenever you see a flat line, that means the market mm, in general is actually quite balanced. The buyers and sellers are not that aggressive. They are quite mutually balanced. So you no, know, if you are swing trading, that will be very good for you because you always catch the extreme and also the downside range uh, whenever market is in the balance. Okay. So just to show you, show it to you using the 200 EMA, um, you can clearly see whenever candles are formed below the 200 EMA, it's trying to tell you that the market is actually going through a downtrend phase. And vice versa, whenever the candles are formed above the 200 EMA line, it's trying to tell you that the market is actually going to go to a bullish phase. So the 200 EMA is significant in a way that it provides you and shows it to you whether the trend is in a bullish or a bearish phase. Now look at the lines carefully. If you see a straight line or a very flattish line, that means the market is consolidating. It's between a tight range. If you are swing trading, you can always capture the, uh, you know, uh, the price range or the particular box range uh, for that particular period. Now, whenever prices break away from that box or away from that range, it always means there's a change in trend. So two things to take note here. One is to look at the, uh, basically the line itself, whether it's pointing downwards or it's pointing upwards and whether the candles are being formed below or above the line. So obviously, whenever candles are formed above the 200 EMA line, uh, especially during a breakout, I think recently we've seen major, majority of the commodities mar markets, especially corn, beet, and soybean, we have seen huge green candles are being formed above their 200 EMA line, which goes to tell you that uh, I think market journey broke away and formed a new bullish trend. So uh, I think besides showing and indicating uh, trend overall in general, I think 200 EMA line also act as a way of support, a long-term support in terms of prices. So you can clearly see here, um, the black circle is to highlight that the candles actually form be for the first time form below the 200 uh, EMA line. And that indicating it's a bearish phase in the market. Um, just basically this chart is to show you the micro E mini S&P uh, 500. So I think it was very bearish, especially during the pandemic when it kicks in. And you can clearly see the candles are actually being formed below the 200 EMA line. Now, the circles highlighted in yellow is to tell you that every time when the candles try to break away, uh, it's indicating you a change in trend. And if you can clearly see, uh, we did broke the 200 EMA line back in early May. This is for micro e mini S&P. And it does rally for a period of time, but there's also a pullback around early June. And that pullback was well supported above the 200 EMA line. So this goes to show that the 200 EMA line can also act as a long-term support for the market. Um, so do take with a do take a caution, especially when you use the 200 EMA as an analysis, because uh, besides breaking candles forming above or below, we also can use the 200 EMA line to indicate where is the resistance and where is the support. Uh, and this usually refers to the long-term support and resistance lines. Now, um, another example is on corn futures. So you can clearly see we have been in a tight range around October last year to um, pretty much early March of this year before the kicking of lockdowns across many major economies. So you can clearly see market was trading in a quite a tight range. But at most times, most of the candles were below the 200 EMA line. And once COVID-19 pandemic kicks in, you can clearly see the market is actually on a downward trajectory because most of the candles, majority of the candles being formed is below the 200 EMA line. Now, of late, back in uh, late August or early September, we start to see the candles are forming above the 200 EMA line. And if you look at the curvature of the line itself, the 200 EMA line starts to point upwards back in early September. So majority of markets, especially for corn market as well, you can clearly see those markets are heading upwards. Um, so I think 200 EMA line is can be used as a way for you to indicate uh, where the trend is going, whether it's on a bearish or a bullish phase. Now, same goes for soybean. You can see there's also period of consolidation. And after a period of consolidation, we can clearly see that there's a downtrend emerging because you can look at it, majority of the candles will, will be below the 200 EMA line. And off late, back in late August and early September, we see a majority of the candles were above the line. And in fact, if you look at it, uh, the line actually pointed upwards back in early September. 
So indeed, I think soybean, corn and wheat has actually entered a bullish phase. Now, um, just a practical example, if you look at this chart, you know, uh, you can clearly see what kind of trend it is. Um, obviously, the line is still pretty, the 200 EMA curvature line is still pretty flat, but off late is actually pointing up. And you look at the candles, majority of the candles are both the 200 EMA line. EMA line. So that this indicates that the market is actually on a bullish phase. So once you identify the trend on the market, whether you are in a bullish phase and or in a bearish phase, it's important for you to time your exit or even time your entry uh, in order for you to better precise um, your trading methodology. So I think one of the ways that we can accompany trend analysis is to use moving average, uh, which is also part of one of the technical analysis indicator. Um, moving average is a very common indicator. A lot of people is using it. A lot of traders are using it. Um, and obviously, if you look at it, uh, if you look at uh, the general market outside, there's a lot of different types of moving averages. I think for the purpose of today's discussion, I'm just going to focus on two main types. One is the simple moving average, and another one is the exponential moving average. And when I was referring to the 200 EMA line earlier, the 200 EMA line is actually referring to the exponential moving average. I will share with you what's the difference between the simple moving average and the exponential moving average. But just go through the concept of moving average, embed it with me. So I think generally, when you look at prices, prices are data that you collect on every daily basis. You can collect on hourly basis and collect even up to a minute basis. And averages are basically, if you look at a simple moving average, it's just basically taking those numbers and divide by the average number of observations. Uh, exponential is slightly different. It's putting a bit more weight on the recent prices. So obviously, if you take a, let's take an example. If you take a 100-day uh, indicator, that means you are taking a 100-day prices average uh, and the average of those uh, prices in those days. If you take a 15-days indicator, it's the prices for 15 days average. So obviously, if you look at it, you know, 100 days is talking, look, looking at a bigger series. So therefore, the average tend to be a bit more lag. 15 days, you, you're talking about you know, two weeks worth of trading data. So that's going to be a faster movement compared to a 100 days uh, indicator. So obviously, numbers, uh, the numbers in moving averages is very variable. Um, and obviously, if you're new to market, it's always best for you to backtest uh, as to what numbers to use in each of the specific indicators because the parametric that you can use in moving average it varies according to the market's conditions it varies to whether it's your behavior of the market the way you approach the markets uh, so you, you have to vary those parametrics accordingly so dynamics of moving average is actually very simple um, i think basically the trader will just search for entry and exit once a short-term average cross over the longer term average so I think in this strategy, uh, moving average strategy is basically to look at crossovers. And crossovers, whenever crossover happens, usually it signals a change in trend direction. Um, so say for example, when shorter term averages crosses above the longer term averages, averages usually it indicates it's a potential bullish event. And vice versa, if a shorter term averages cross below longer term averages, it usually signals a bearish, uh, a bearish event that's about to happen. Okay, so simple moving averages is actually taking all your prices from, let's say a five days moving average will take the prices of all the five days and divided by the number of observation. So it's just a simple average which you use it very commonly. Now, the interesting thing is that exponential is slightly different. Sorry about that. So exponential moving average is slightly different. Uh, it applies a lot of weight on your recent uh, trading days and it always goes by a multiplier. So um, I'm just going to go very briefly on calculations because you know, as you know, a lot of trading platforms outside, even charting platforms, you just need to punch in numbers. They will calculate autonomously and in a very quick way, you can get all your calculations on hand. So you don't have to remember the formula because it's all inbuilt into your trading platform right now. Um, so EMA is slightly different from simple average in the way that it gives a lot of weight for recent days, uh, recent trading days. So in a sense that EMA is actually more reflective of the current market scenario. So if you look, if you want to compare the lines, anyway, this is just a calculation. Um, now 
if you look at the calculation, I won't go too detailed, but if you look into the calculation per se, uh, EMA always needs a day more data compared to the simple uh, moving average. So in a sense that it requires more data. Um, and the multiplier is actually basically just putting more weight on your recent, uh, recent data. So I think in a way that you know, it gives a lot of speed in terms of how EMA is going to react. So you can clearly see there's two examples here. One is on the EMA, one is on the SMA. Same parametric, I'm using a nine days uh, observation. So EMA, you can see that um, EMA turns a bit quicker compared to the simple moving average. So whenever you start to see an uptrend, the EMA will, will signal you first compared to the simple moving average um, because it puts a lot of emphasis on your recent observations. So going back into uh, the crossovers. So whenever you see a bullish crossovers, it's signified always by the shorter term moving averages crossing uh, above the longer term moving average. And usually in that sense, you have a bullish event. Vice versa, if you have a shorter term crossing from be uh, crossing below the longer term averages, that's usually signifying, signifying a bearish event. So um, in this setups, I'm using a 9 days EMA and a 20 days EMA. So 9 days EMA in a sense is a shorter term time frame because 9 days is only talking about two weeks of uh, trading uh, information and 20 days is talking about a month's worth of trading days. Um, so in, the, in that sense, 20 days, 20 EMA days is signified as the longer term trend. So you can clearly see uh, whenever the 9 days EMA starts to cross the 20 EMA uh, below, from below, you can clearly see that the market is actually changing trend. And in this sense, the market is actually heading down south. Um, and obviously, on top of that, we do add in the candles, which I'm going to elaborate in the next section. And if you look at it, uh, there's also another third line where we frequently talk about the 200 days EMA. And your candles below that, that usually tells you that the longer term trend is also bearish. The shorter term, the shorter term trend is also bearish. That signifies that um, the likelihood for the market to go low, even lower is quite high. So be in a position where, be in a trade where you think the probability uh, that you can able to get from the market is better on your side. Never go against the market because you're always against the probability. So whenever you have both the longer term trend and the shorter term trend in line, that tells you that the trend itself is going to be very strong. Um, obviously, um, volume is also another type of analysis where you can uh, look at it. I, I will not delve too much in, too much detail onto volume analysis today because given the time consideration, but generally as a thought, whenever you see a trend with strong volume, that usually tells you that trend is there, is there to stay. Until when you see that even though you see strong prices or weak prices, but volume doesn't signify or doesn't gel, that's, some, that's telling you something about the market. Okay, so again, I think this is a different scenario, a bullish cross, crossover whereby the 9 EMA just cross both the 20 EMA, uh, the longer term time frame, And you look at it, the majority of the candles are actually above the 200 days EMA. So that this goes to tells you that the market is actually trying to change the trend. The trend is changing in a shorter term basis. And that's a very good position for you to enter. And just to highlight also, if you look at it, the volume is also actually very good. Um, and when you see, whenever you see a high volume scenario, high volume play out, that's usually what I can tell you the market participants are coming back into the market. And whatever trend that's going to turn up or whether it's turned down, it's going to be strong. So these are some of the analysis that you had to put in, especially when you look at uh, crossovers uh, using the moving averages. Now, the third part for a trading setup is to look at candlesticks. And Haken Ashi is actually part of candlesticks. And, but the only difference is that Haken Ashi, the word Haken Ashi means average in Japanese. Um, it's quite a balanced bar. Um, so a typical candlesticks will show you the overall trend. You have the week, you have the candlestick week, you have the body. Um, in Haken Ashi is also similar, but Haken Ashi is trying to smooth out the price action uh, by taking just the average each bar. Um, so, you know, in candlesticks, you don't have a mathematical formula. You don't have a way to calculate. It's just based on whatever the price that's quoted on the screen. And you just form the, the body of the candle, the week of the candle. Uh, but in Haken, actually, it's slightly different. 
because it's taking averages of those candles. So there's calculation involved. Um, now, the reason um, Haken actually is actually getting quite popular nowadays is that um, it's very similar to candlesticks. Uh, and in a way, if you look at it, if you're in an uptrend market or in a very trendy market in general, you can clearly see Haken actually does uh, visualize better compared to candlesticks. Um, and because of that reason alone, a lot of people are actually trying to use Haken actually, especially during a very trendy market. Uh, but that nevertheless to say that you know, Haken actually is still useful even though you are in a very uh, balanced market or in a side, side range or sideways market. Uh, it's also useful in those markets as well. Now, um, I'm not going to bore you with the calculation, but again, it's just taking the average of the normal Japanese candlesticks, uh, this uh, average of those candles. Um, this is just a simple calculation. And again, I think majority of the trading platforms or even the charting platforms, they do have the Haken Ashi candlesticks uh, enabled. You can obviously switch from a Japanese candlesticks to a Haken Ashi candlesticks with just a click of button. So don't be afraid of the calculation, but if you want to go very detailed or you want to be your own setup, you want to do your own algorithmic trading, you want to go into the calculations, you can definitely look at look into the formulas uh, into it. Now, comparing Japanese candlesticks and the Haken Ashi. So on the left, you have the normal Japanese candlesticks. And on the right, you, can, you clearly have the Haken Ashi, which looks very similar. But if you look at the, the color itself, the color coding itself is slightly different. Now, if you look at the Japanese candlesticks, you obviously can see there's a lot of gaps. And when you look at Haken Ashi, Haken Ashi take away those gaps by forming bodies. So technically, you don't see gaps in Haken Ashi. But when th what those gaps signify is represented by the body color of the Haken Ashi candles. So Haken Ashi is actually trying to smooth out the overall trend of the market. Regardless whether you are in a, what, whatever time frame it is you are in, it's trying to tell you uh, the general trend of the market sentiment. Japanese candlesticks, however, is trying to tell you, uh, you know, whatever the price of the market is or whatever the market is doing at that point in time. So it's slightly different, but if you want to visualize whether the trend is strong, whether the trend is weakening, whether it's a potential trend reversal, by using candlesticks, it's quite difficult because um, there's a lot of formation, a lot of candlestick patterns that you have to be aware of and you have to know it by heart. But Haken actually is actually pure and simple. You just look at the color of the bars, whether it's green or red, and from there you can just justify whether the trend will continue or the trend will not continue. So comparison of Haken Ashi in detail. Haken Ashi only take care of three simple patterns, which I'm going to share with you later. Candlesticks have thousands of patterns. Um, you, if you just look at a, a very famous book, a Japanese candlestick book by Steve Nissen, uh, for those who, who probably have heard about it or those who have read about it, there's a lot of candlestick patterns outside. And you know, nowadays I, I do encounter whereby you know, systems that do uh, show you, show it to you, visualize it to you, the different type of patterns that's available. Um, but that's still a lot. So in Haken SG, you don't have to remember those patterns. It's, it's, it's very important for you to just to look at the colors of the bars to determine whether the trend can continue or there's a trend reversal. There's always a set of rules for you to follow in Haken SG. Again, um, I think, you know, there's always a general saying when it comes to trading, it's pretty much a part of art rather than science. So obviously rules are there for, in place for you to guide you. But obviously, you know, in trading, there's always, you always must have room of dynamics. You always must bend yourself uh, against those rules. You cannot follow it hard and fast because you know, markets are very dynamic in general. So market condition changes. But these rules are there for you to, in place for you to build up a foundation. And from there, you probably have to tweak it along uh, to probably be, very comfortable with whatever markets you're trading with. Um, candlesticks also similar. In fact, there's actually a lot of rules to follow uh, because each different pattern in candlesticks will have different type of rules. Um, so in that sense, Haken Ashi is actually quite simple. You can learn it quite fast uh, and you can put it into practice. You can even backtest it uh, because once you get the hang of it, you roughly will know how to backtest it into a particular market. Candlesticks, however, you need time. You probably need uh, no, depends on your learning curve. You probably need more time. You spend more time looking at different charts, different patterns formation for you to really understand the whole dynamics. And if you look at 
in the chart itself. So obviously, Japanese candlesticks are quite hard to visualize the overall trend. Uh, if you look at Haken, actually, it's actually very simple. You can look at, okay, red bars are basically downtrend, green bars are basically uptrend. When you have series of green and red, it's trying to tell you the market is indecisive. So those are sideways market. Okay, so in a way, Haken actually is actually quite visual. And again, it's quantifiable. You can calculate it. Candlesticks is different. It's just visual on a on point in time. So, um, and you can't quantify it. So in that sense, I think Haken actually is a bit more objective in certain ways. Um, candlesticks is a bit more subjective. Again, you know, it depends on how you look at it. If you have, you know, if you someone, you know, be very long in the market, seeing candlesticks every day, you know, it actually involves a little bit of subjective. You know, the way you see it, uh, bullish formation, another person may not see it as a bullish formation, especially in candlesticks patterns. So these are some of the key differences between the Haken actually and the candlesticks. So going through some of the rules, um, I think if you just look at it, whenever a candle has a very big body, whether it's green or red, it's trying to tell you the trend is strong. The buyers or the sellers are aggressive. Now, if you see a wick or the candlestick tails, that's where you need to be careful. Candlestick tails usually tells you that uh, whether the buyer is strong, but there's always opposing forces coming to the market. Um, and whenever you have you know, a very huge weeks of shadows, we call it. Um, that usually tells you that the trend is actually weakening. Um, so consolidation phase, usually you have always smaller bodies because market is actually indecisive. So consolidation phase is where, you know, you always see, uh, you know, in candlesticks, you probably see like dodgy patterns. So in Haken actually is also something similar. You see periods of series of uh, candles which are smaller in body and, you know, upper and lower shadows are also there. Uh, so that tells you that the market is actually indecisive and you know, it's up to you whether you, know, you like to trade those markets because you know, it's always a side range market. But once you break across those side range markets, it's always going to be a very strong trend, whether it's on the upside or it's on the downside. Um, and obviously, trend reversal is likely to emerge whenever you see a dodgy like candle. So the dodgy principle in candlesticks can also apply in the Haken Ashi principle as well. So when you see a, a dodgy, it means that you, you don't have a body, but you have uh, sort of like a cross symbols. So I think those are the time where you need to be very careful uh, whenever you look at the, uh, the market in general. Okay, so green candlesticks with long bodies are usually signified uptrend. Red candlesticks with long bodies are downtrend. Um, small bodies surrounded by upper and lower shadows usually tells you that the trend is probably exhausted. Uh, it's not trying to tell you there's a trend change, there's a possible trend change, but it's just trying to tell you whatever trend it is previously is taking a break. So, you know, if you are you not know, think you are already in a position, think of exiting. If you haven't been in any position yet, probably you should start to look at any opportunity arising from this uh, trend uh, trend pausing phase. Um, green candlestick, you know, no lower shadows. These are basically the body itself is actually a very strong uptrend. And red candlesticks with no upper shadows is actually telling you there's a strong downtrend. So basically this is how it looks like. Um, and you can clearly see full body candles are always very strong trend. That tells you that the buyers and sellers are very aggressive on a single side. And whenever you see that you have a very small body but huge shadows, that always tells you that the market is indecisive. And especially if you are seeing this after coming from a trend, you better be careful. So let's put into perspective. Um, so you can clearly see the picture on the left. You can clearly see the candles of the body is getting wider, but up to the peak where you can see the bodies of the candles are getting smaller. So those periods are where you need to be careful. Whenever you see bodies are getting smaller, and in fact, the shadows are getting longer, that's where you know, period of consolidation or trend change is possible. Now, obviously, we all, if you're bullish, if you're someone that's bullish, you long the market, we always love to see big green candles. Now, big green candles are always signaling that the trend, overall trend in a particular direction is strong. You can accompany this by volume analysis. If the volume is strong, the trend is strong, the body of the candle is white, then you pretty much a trend is solid. Um, however, if YC versa, if you see a very strong, big full body green candle, but the volume doesn't justify it, the volume in fact is declining, that's where you need to be careful. 
that goes to show that the market doesn't attract a, a lot of uh, buyers. In fact, sellers are just waiting to come into the market. So these are some of the little analysis that you can incorporate uh, in order for in order to give you a better and fuller picture. Now, YC versa, you look at it on the downside, if you see big red candles, the trend is strong on the downside. And you can always also accompany this by volume analysis. So whenever a downtrend accompanied by strong volume, the downtrend is here to stay. So obviously, if you look at it, those uh, dodgy light of candles where the body is very small, in fact, there's no body at all, that's where you need to be careful. Because that goes to tell you that the trend is changing. So if you're someone that is in the market, you've just shorted the market, Dodges are usually the first sign that, you know, telling you something is not right. Okay. Uh, now, looking into this analysis, Haken and Ashley, it's also important for you to take note. So, at which particular point of entry will you be entering into the market? So, there's always a general rule of thumb. You enter on the second or third candle colored formation. So, for example, if all the while it's been red and suddenly you see a green candle, you don't go on the immediate first green candle because it could be a false breakout. It could be someone flushing uh, other traders out. So usually you wait for a second candle to be formed. If it's a green candle, that means um, the trend has changed or YC versa. If it's a red candle, the trend has changed. So the general rule of thumb is to wait out onto the second or third candles. If you are a bit more conservative, you should wait to the third candle. Um, but that again also depends on the time frame that you're looking at. So sideway patterns. Now sideway patterns are uh, very common general in the market where the trend is probably peak. Um, but it also goes to tell you there's a lot of opportunity in the sideways market. If you are someone that's trading uh, a swing type trader, you always want to be at you know the extreme ends of the particular trading range. You know you want to be long at the at the support, you know short at the uh, take out your profit at the resistance or short at the resistance. So sideway sideway markets are actually very um, I don't it, it actually very attractive for swing traders given the fact that the market is actually in balance. But what you need to take note of is market coming out from a range usually tends to be very strong. In it could be a reverse trend or it's preceding the previous trend, or it could be following the previous trend as well. So this is something for you to take note. And especially if the volume during the sideways trends are high. That is trying to tell you that the market is actually trying to, the buying and selling are trying to uh, change into a different camp. So these are the, some of the key characteristics that we need to take note whenever we are trading the market. So sideways patterns are, are easy to trade. If you look at it, uh, whenever you see series of uh, indecisive, basically it's like you see series of red candles followed by another series of green candles, you know, then you probably, if you're trying to follow a particular trend, you should be out of the market because it's a side range market for a period of time. And this could be this could last for a period of days, in fact, month, weeks or even months. Okay, so let's put into dynamics. So you can clearly see that um, whenever you see periods of red and green candles, which is small body, those are period of consolidation phase. And when you see subsequent candles are all red, that means you are in a downtrend. Same goes whenever you see a subsequent green candles, you are in the uptrend. So at those points, you, know, you should be entering your position and exiting your position accordingly. Okay, so now I think benefits of using Haken Energy is actually quite obvious. Um, you can use Haken Energy to spot a trend in a more accurate and more visual manner. You can clearly see it. And when you see the trend change, you probably know when the trend will change. Um, and I think just by looking at the colors, it gives you a lot of perspective. It makes your decision easier. Because by looking at candlesticks, the Japanese candlesticks by default, you have so many patterns for you to recognize and memorize. So your, de your decision, sometimes it can cause you to be indecisive. You can't make a decision. So it can actually, in a way, smoothen out that process. It just gives you the colored paths and you make your decision accordingly. Now, Obviously, not everything is perfect with Haken Ashi. There's obviously certain drawbacks. Um, I think one of the key uh, major uh, disadvantage of Haken Ashi is that you know it takes away a lot of dynamics in the candlesticks. Uh, dyna candlesticks alone, in the sense that if you look at it, you take away the bars, you you can't see the gaps, 
uh, whether the market is actually gapping up or gapping down. So you can't really gauge where the market momentum is. Um, and obviously, you know, since Japan, uh, Haken actually candles are based on a calculation of the Japanese candlesticks, so it requires a single bar movement from the Japanese candlesticks. Uh, that means it needs more data. Um, so in a way, it tends to also slack behind. But in terms of visually, whether the trend is still strong or weak, I think Haken actually did a better job compared to the Japanese candlesticks. Um, so obviously, I think you know, your standard Japanese candlesticks can reveal a lot of information because it tells you what is the market doing at that point in time. Um, so you know, literally, you are gauging the market sentiment at every point in time. But Haken Ash is actually taking over all picture, uh, including the gaps, including uh, the previous uh, trend formation. So it's like, it's, in a way, it's, uh, it can complicate things. But you know, if you just stick to certain rules that is, uh, that is available in some of the Haken Ash, it does counter some of the side effects. Um, but importantly, you can't, it's, I'm not trying to say that Japanese candlesticks you know, is, is definitely you need to avoid. Uh, thereafter, but you know, it's something that you can complement. Um, if you want to get more understanding into the real market dynamics at that point in time, I think Jap Japanese candlesticks does a better job. Now, going to the uh, final bit of the trading part, uh, trading strategy is to always have a risk management in place. Now, trading without risk management is just pure uh, putting yourself into pure risk. Um, the reason I'm saying is that you know, as we all understand, we're going to a very volatile phase in the market. If you do not put your stop loss in place, every time you trade without a stop loss, you are just jeopardizing your position. Even though you have a perfect entry, a perfect exit, you are taking too much risk on yourself. So by putting a stop loss in, it actually tries to stop you out whenever the market goes against you. you know? But it actually, in a way, is also protecting your capital. So you no, know, the, the general rule of thumb in trading is always protect your capital because without capital, it's always very hard for you to regain back the momentum in the market. So risk management is an important tool that you must have every time when you trade. Um, so obviously you need to know your R's, which basically refers to risk per unit. And it's also another simple mathematics. It's basically calculate your average win and against your average loss in terms of uh, value. So if you have, you have a low, uh, R multiple that goes to tell you that you have to compensate by a higher uh, win ratio. That means out of 10 tries, you got to perfect uh, your win rate even better to compensate uh, in your decrease in R multiples. Now, one of the key tool, uh, key tool, technical tool that I use for in terms of risk management is the average true range. I think in this analysis, average true range will tell you that what is a particular range, the high and lows. Uh, of a particular market at a particular point in time. So, you know, if you taking, if, if the market is actually gyrating between a very high value and a very low value, your ATR value is going to be high. So that means you have to be accommodative to accommodate a bigger value of loss. Um, obviously, you also be targeting a bigger value of profit. So in that sense, ATR gives you a sense of where the market uh, volatility is. So in a very volatile market, obviously you got to give yourself a bigger buffer, and a less volatile market, you give yourself a lower, a lower, uh, a lower buffer itself. Okay. Now just to show you, to show example is a con futures. Um, we just look at it. The ATR value is about nine cents. So assuming you just entered about four hundred twelve cents, so you probably with an ATR of nine cents at the current point in time, your stop loss will be. Uh, if you talk about two to one ratio, your risk level will probably be nine cents. So it's just you get stop out at whenever it hits four four hundred three cents. So this is how you actually place a stop loss, and it's very important for you to do that. Now this is assuming you put two to one uh, risk to reward ratio. Obviously you can adjust the risk to reward ratio according to markets, according to your comfortable level, and according to your confidence level as well. Okay, so putting into perspective, we have talked about the long-term trends. We talk about wing averages crossovers. We talk about Haken Uh, and also we talk about ATR. So you know, when you have all this in place, you can put a trading setups in place. 
So during consolidation phase is where you know, if you're a swing trader, you like it. But if you're a trend trader, you tend to avoid it because you know, the market's indecisive at that point in time. Whenever you see a crossover in moving averages starts to appear, you know, the point I highlighted in red, um, 9 EMA cross above the 20 EMA, that tells you it's going to be a strong trend. And justified by a long blue, uh, long green candles, that tells you, hey, actually the strong uptrend is there to stay. Obviously, trend will face exhaustion. There's always a pullback. So during the pullback, if it's well supported by the MAs, it doesn't cross below the MAs, that means the, up, the uptrend is still intact. So you can still continue to hold on to that trade. Until obviously when you see start to see big green candles, that's where you'll be very careful. Uh, that's where usually if you're along the market, you probably need to get out. Okay, so another simple setup, whenever you see a 9 EMA cross above 20 EMA, that again tells you there's a strong, uh, it's a bullish crossover. And when you see green candles, if you start from the second green candle is formed, that means the bullish phase is starting. And obviously, if you look at ATR values, the volatility has started to increase. When you start to see this in place, with coupled with volume, um, it's just trying to tell you that the market is actually ready to go into a new trend. So therefore, it's a very opportune time for you to be in the market, uh, be in that position. Okay, so I think I've covered in terms of the execution of the trades uh, on using the different set of indicators, uh, as well as um, you know, type of risk management that you need to employ. Last but not least, is always keeping a tap on your performance. Um, I, you know, as a trader starting out, it's always very easy for you to discount uh, the work that you need to do. Um, it's always simple just to you know, keep tabs on your profit and loss. Uh, if you do that, if you don't have a detailed trading record, you won't know what are your areas that you're weak of and what are your areas of strength. And obviously, as a trader, you need to redefine your strategy every now and then. You need to work on your weakness. And obviously, you need to expand your strength. So trading journal is definitely a must. If you are someone new to the market, it's important for you to keep a journal. Um, and in, I, I'm not sure what, if you are currently trading, you know, if you have a journal, what type of uh, information you are putting in. Obviously, you definitely put in your volume done, your uh, P&L, you know, your uh, basically your positions, your entry price. And one of the key things that I always want to put in is the remark uh, of your particular trades. Remark it in a way that, you know, it, it could be even trades that, that's making you profit. Try to remark on certain things like, you know, whether is there any area of improvement that you can improve on the certain trades. So remarks is very important if you are doing a journal. And I would highly recommend if you are someone new, you do need to take a tab of your journals. Okay. Um, yeah, so again, I have to re-emphasize the point. Um, you always keep a trading journal because it helps you to keep your performance in check. So retrade the five simple trading steps which I just, high, uh, I just shared with you earlier. Well, first thing is to define the prevailing trend, whether it's in a bullish trend or it's in a bearish trend. Um, second is to incorporate your moving averages, which is the crossovers, the bullish crossovers and the bearish crossovers. And third, to incorporate those candles into Haken Ashi candles. Um, again, I'm not discounting Japanese candlesticks here. It's good and in fact better if you can complement it with the Japanese candlesticks. Uh, but in trading, it's always, it requires you to make that instant decision. So Haken Ashi is in a way is quite effective in that sense. Um, so, and last but not least, always manage your risk uh, by using the ATR, which is your average true range. And last, the last part, which every, um, traders need to do is always to keep a track of your trading performance. Okay, um, so I think with that, uh, I think in terms of strategy wise, uh, it's pretty much there. But again, I just want to emphasize technical analysis is just one portion. Trading commodities is actually generally quite uh, different from trading other uh, asset classes. The reason being is because commodities actually affected by fundamentals in such a big way. If you look at, um, say for example, corn or even soybean, what explained the recent rally? The fundamentals of the particular product, particular market actually drive the kind of rally. It could be weather, it could be supply and demand. So you need to take this uh, as part of a trading consideration as well. Um, and again, um, you know, you can't discredit fundamental, even though it may not give you that precise picture, but you just also have to take note because it gives you a wholesome picture if you can combine 
as part of your trading plan. Okay, um, I'm just not going to touch this support and resistance. Um, I, I, I think this is generally quite well known. Uh, you know, support lines are basically lines that, you know, uh, prices will tend to be supported at those areas. It won't breach below those areas. Resistance, however, is there are other opposite extreme. Uh, basically, those lines of prices where you know prices don't cross above, it's usually where you know buyers will usually meet strong sellers at that point in time. Okay, just to show you some dynamics, uh, you can see those circles in yellow. Uh, basically, those areas where it's trying to reach a particular price level. Um, so at those areas, this is what we call uh, resistance lines. But the dynamic of support and resistance line is that a support line can become a resistance line, resistance line can be a support line once it's breached. And how to gauge the, the, the reliance or the, the, the strength of the trend, uh, the particular line is to look into how many times it's actually being uh, tested. The more times being tested, the more supportive the particular line is. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to share with you the last bit is on the outlook itself. Um, I think if you look at it, con the three dollars has been very supportive for is in fact if you look if you can go back after this and look at the charts, the three dollars has actually been a strong support for many years. Um, and obviously right now um the point to cross is a 450 level. If it does cross above that, uh, I think market is probably going to test the five five dollars uh, eventually. Um, I think the current bull trend is going to face exhaustion pretty soon. Uh, and obviously we are heading to U.S. election, so you have to be careful what you think the market is going to stay. Um, so you have to take note of that as well. Soybean, on the other hand, is actually very bullish. Uh, in fact, you look at it, um, we have crossed the $10 mark. Um, the next level to cross is just even $11. If it does cross that, technically the market is going to go for another rally, which could potentially push it to the $12 mark. Um, again, every trend will have exhaustion. Uh, it will come to a point in time there will be a pullback. So those are the point in time where it's actually an opportunity for you to be in the market. So same goes for wheat. In fact, all these three major as um, major commodity asset classes actually pointed upwards in terms of trends, the respective trends, and it actually broke uh, easily the two or three years past trends. So I think it's crucial to watch whether this rally can it sustain going forward. Keeping in mind, you know, we have a lot of uncertainty that's ahead of us. Um, and again, you know, be mindful, be very mindful whenever the trends start to reverse, uh, because that's where you know it can be an opportunity for you. And if you're in the market, you know, be very sure that you need to exit the market as soon as possible. Okay, um, just to share with you the contract specification for soybean, these are the respective margins. Um, so take value for these three contracts is goes by the minimum of a quarter of a cent, and each quarter of each quarter of cent uh, gives you a tick value of $12.50. Okay, trading times are very similar to Asian Asian hours. In fact, it cross uh, into the US market as well, uh, AM to 8.45, 9.30 to 2.20 AM in the morning. Um, so I think you know it's pretty much a well-rounded market. And if you just look at trading volumes uh, on CME exchange, I think it's pretty decent. Uh, it gives you a lot of liquidity. So you don't have to have the worry that you, know, you can't get out of the market or you're gonna face a huge big and large spread. Um, I think the soybean futures, the corn market, or even the wheat market is actually a very deep enough market. Um, so it actually gives you a lot of opportunity for you to be involved in the market. So David, is there anything else you would like to add on before we end the session? Okay, yeah, um, sure. I, I hope today I've covered uh, the five simple steps for you to start your trading journey. Um, and hopefully it's sufficient enough for you to uh, begin your trading journey. Now, what I want to emphasize here is that you know, this is not, uh, again, you don't take this hard and fast. And like I said, market is always dynamic. You know, whatever works, whatever I show you to you, it may work for a period of time. You need to tweak it. Uh, and here, tweaking it means you need to really be in the market, trading it. You need to do a lot of back tests, uh, whether you change your parametrics, whether you incorporate other indicators, other technical indicators to probably uh, tweak your system a little bit. Uh, you need to do all that because, you know, like I said, market always changes. And again, when market gets volatile, you know, uh, that is where you need to be very careful uh, of. But as a good starting ground, as a good platform for you to begin with, I think uh, these five simple steps that which, which I covered today, hopefully can get you started. 
All right. Um, great. Thank you, everyone. Should you have any further queries, please feel free to drop us an email at bcrm at kananda.com.my. We appreciate you being here and hope that you enjoyed the webinar today. Please take a minute to read our webinar and your feedback is highly appreciated. Again, don't forget to register for our next webinar. Thanks again for joining us and hope to see you again. Uh, stay safe, everyone, and good night. Good night. Thank you. What are you clicking? Click kanangafutures.com.my, Malaysia's leading derivatives broker.